Okay, problem 11 in our notes. Uh, we have 10 kilograms of this refrigerant 134A. All right, that's a big red, fl red flag, but notice it's refrigerant. Uh, at 300 kPa, it fills a container whose volume is 14 liters. Determine the te temperature and total enthalpy in the container. All right, then the container is now heated until the pressure becomes 600 kPa. Then determine the temperature and enthalpy after it's heated. So now we're going to look at some problems where we're going from one state to another state. All right, so we might use the property tables, right, to find the, the, what's happening at that first state. And then we're going to go to the second state and use property tables to find what's happening at the second state. Now, uh, the problem before, everything was just explicitly just stated, you know, hey, here is the pressure and here is the U. Or you know, here is the temperature and here is the pressure. Uh, sometimes these problem statements, <clears throat> the hardest part is figuring out what they are giving me. All right, so I'm, a, I'm a refrigerant, right? And I'm in SI units. So I'm going to be looking at table 11, 12, or 13, right? Refrigerant, SI units, tables A11, A12, A13. All right. So uh, state one, uh, the pressure, and sometimes it's just helpful to write out almost as if you're you're going to kind of fill out a one of those charts from the previous problem. Okay, I'm, I'm told the pressure is 300 kPa. <clears throat> Huh. I'm told the mass is 10 kilograms. Now, that's not really on our property tables, is it? No. Also, the volume, <clears throat> I'm told, is 14 liters. That's also not on our property tables, but I think writing that out gives you a, gives you a hint. You know, are you all seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, first of all, this volume of 14 liters is 0 0.014 meters cubed. And by giving us the mass and by giving us the volume, they're really telling us in a roundabout way the specific volume, right? Specific volume is total volume divided by mass. Let's go ahead and do that, right? The total volume, 0 0.014 meters cubed divided by 10 kilograms, 0 0.0014 meters cubed per kilogram, 0 0.00. So in a roundabout way, they did tell us little v is 0 0.0014 meters cubed per kilogram. And once I have two pieces of, of good information, the pressure and the specific volume, then I can go to the property tables and, and kind of find anything else uh, that it's asking for. What else is it asking for? It's asking for temperature and total enthalpy. Let's not worry about the second half of the problem just yet. Just let's worry about state one. <clears throat> All right, so I would go to uh, the property table for refrigerant that gives me a pressure of 300 and a specific volume 0.0014. That'd be table A12. <clears throat> All right, so you can see here what, what I'm, I'm showing you. Let, let's go look to table A12. Table A12 right here. <clears throat> uh, it, it actually did not give me a pressure of 300 kPa. And sometimes you will have to interpolate between two rows, uh, but I, I didn't want you to do that. So you can see in your notes, I went ahead and interpolated for us. I interpolated between these two temperatures, between these specific volumes, and we're going to be using enthalpies between these. So I went ahead and did that for you. Now, <clears throat> You do know that linear interpolation, if your number is halfway in between, like this one is 300, then all of these are going to be halfway in between. You can just take the average of all of those numbers. So that's what I did. Uh, but in general, <clears throat> I, I may, it, I won't say for 100%, but I may, if, if your point lies in between two columns, I may interpolate that for you. Um, I'm definitely not going to make you do a double interpolation. So here's one one thing real quick. I'm not going to make you do a double interpolation. So let's so this is a side note, not related to this problem at all. But let's say you had superheated. Let's say you had it superheated. The pressure was 0.2 and the temperature was 38. Uh, th then you would go here and you would interpolate between 30 and 40, I would expect you to do that. 
All right. Here's another thing I would expect you to do. Here's another thing I would expect you to do. Uh, let's say the pressure is uh, 0.22. If the pressure is in between these two, all right, and the temperature is 50, then depending on what you're trying to find, it if it's this one, you would just interpolate between that one and that one, right? If the, you know, you, you would just interpolate between that one. If you if you know the temperature is right there. And the pressure you have to interpolate, you know, top minus bottom over middle minus bottom equals top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. That's how I do it. All right, here's a double interpolation. This is what I'm not going to have you do. This is a complete tangent. S side note, okay. I'm not going to give you like 0.23 where you have to interpolate between these two boxes and like a 48 where you have to interpolate between those two. I'm not going to give you a double interpolation. I think you might could do it, uh, but I'm not going to. Um, so anyway, single interpolation, you will, ha might have to do somewhere on the test. Uh, double interpolation, you won't have to do. But anyway, I was feeling very generous, and I went ahead, and because there are a lot of values that we're going to need to use, I went ahead in our notes and gave us these values as if it, this had a line for 300. What would its temperature be? What would its V be? What, was its, what would its H be? Oh, okay, sorry. So, <clears throat> go back to our notes. All right. I actually don't know if it's saturated or if it's superheated or compressed. Um, this pressure with this V, uh, it, it's in between those two, right? That pressure and that specific volume, it is in between the two, so it's a mixture. So let's find quality. It, it didn't really tell us to find the quality, but in general, <clears throat> if you know it's a mixture, it's a good idea to find the quality because that quality lets you solve for all the other values. And actually, before we go too far, the T is 0 0.61 degrees C. Right, the T, the temperature, and it asks for it, is the saturation temperature because the V is in between the two. So that shows me that I know it's a mixture, and so there's only one T for that uh, pressure. All right, so let's find the quality. I know, let's see, we're looking at Vs. We're looking at specific volumes. What's my equation? V equals VF plus X V F G. I know my V is 0.014. I know my VF is 0 0.007735 plus quality, which I don't know, times VFG. So that would be point. If this was um, H, U, or S, the property table would just tell me FG. Uh, but for the Vs, it doesn't tell me FG. So I've got to take the G minus the F, 0 0.0007735. Put a 5 down, back down there <clears throat> and solve for x. That's just an equation, and I'm solving for x. x, 0 0.009351. 0 0.009351. All right. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Uh, is it much closer to... The VF and the VG. This is a little bit harder with all these decimal places and 0 0.0014. I, I was kind of thinking that this was 0 0.014 and didn't think it'd be that far away, <clears throat> but it's 0 0.0014. So yeah, I think that quality makes sense. Once you've got this quality, then you can find anything else you're looking for. It's asking for the H. Let's do HF plus X HFG. H, <clears throat> so here we go, are the HF and the HFG, uh, 52.71 plus quality 0 0.009351 times 198.17. <clears throat> I've got an H, 54.56. And now I should have been uh, plugging units in here, but I, I don't. Uh, the, these were kilojoules per kilogram. That's specific enthalpy. If it asks, hey, what is the specific enthalpy? I'd box that in. That would be my specific enthalpy. It asks for total enthalpy. If I just say enthalpy, I'm actually looking for total enthalpy. 
Uh, and this one explicitly said total enthalpy. Uh, so how do I get the total value? Well, all of those specific values were total divided by mass. So multiply times mass. Also, just think, look at your units here. Multiply this times mass. H would be HM. This would be 54.56 kilojoules <clears throat> per kilogram times 10 kilograms. Yeah, 545.6 kilojoules is the total enthalpy. Total enthalpy. All right, and that was just state one. That was just the beginning of the problem. All right, then it says the container is now heated until the pressure is 600 kPa. Uh, so let me kind of write down, what do I know about state two? The pressure is now 600 kPa. kPa. <clears throat> um, this, what else do I know? Do I know, do I know the temperature? I don't know. It was heated. Um, this is a rigid container, right? This is a rigid container, meaning the, the, the volume does not change, right? Meaning the volume does not change. And also, if it looks like there's no way for the mass to come in or out. Did it say something about mass coming in? Did it say something about mass going out? <coughs> if this is a closed, rigid tank, which I think we can tell from the problem statement, it's a closed, rigid tank, then the mass stays the same and the volume stays the same. Now, some of that might be changing from liquid to gas, but it still is ten total 10 kilograms. It's still a total volume of... 14 liters, and so my specific volume is still 0.0014 meters cubed per kilogram. So sometimes with these problems, it'll say something about state one and then state two. If it says rigid container, then the volume stays the same. Most of all these are going to be closed systems, so the mass stays the same. Sometimes it might say this is a constant pressure process. So you know that the pressure from state one is the same as pressure from state two. It might say it's an isobaric, which is constant pressure, an isothermal, you know, constant temperature. It might even say like an isentropic, constant entropy. Um, so, so anyway, this was a rigid container with no mass going in or out, so the specific volume uh, stays the same. So from those two pieces of information, I can go to table A12 just to see, is, is it still a mixture or is it all superheated now? So I'd go to table A12, go to 600 kPa, and I've got a V of 0 0.0014. Let's go to table A12, 600 kPa, I've got a V of point zero zero one four yes that is still in between vf and vg so it is still a mixture so first of all th that's the temperature 21.55 and i'm going to calculate a new quality right i'm going to calculate a new quality so let's go back to our um notes the temperature is going to be 21.55 degrees C. All right, and then it asks for H. Well, I, I don't know how to find it exactly, but I do know, yes, I do know how to find it. How am I going to find it? I'm going to take that and find a new quality. Find new quality X. Even though it didn't explicitly ask for it, a lot of times that, that's what you need to do. You need to find the quality and then with the quality, I can find the H. So, uh, V equals VF plus X VFG. Um, 0.0014 equals my new VF, because this is now at, at 600 kPa. My new VF, 0.008198 plus X, 0 0.034335. Minus point zero 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 eight one nine eight. I would get a quality point zero one seven three. So I was at a quality point zero zero nine something. 
Now I'm at a little bit higher quality, 0 0.0173. Now I'm going to take that to H, HF plus X, HFG. These are now still at our new pressure, 600 kPa. So my H is going to be HF. So if you go to table A12, 600 kPa, our HF, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 81.51 plus a quality, 0 0.0173. Uh, HFG is 180.90. I would get an H of 84.64 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Uh, but I want my capital H. Capital H, I'm going to take that and multiply it times. We still have 10 kilograms. Still have 10 kilograms. 846.4 kilojoules is my H final. Ooh, what a problem, but a good problem. And you will have a problem on your test that, you know, goes from one state to another. From one state to another. So this one, it went um, from this one state, right, with a pressure of 300. And in a roundabout way, they told me that the specific volume was 0 0.0014. So then I can solve for everything else, right? If you know two good pieces of information... Then you can find the rest. I knew the pressure and the specific volume. I found the T. I found the X, which let me find the H. Then my state 2, they gave me the pressure. And in a roundabout way, because it was a rigid container and there was no mass entering or exiting, it the specific volume was the same. So two pieces of information. I can find the temperature. I found the X so that I could find the H. All right. Whew. That was a good one.